أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him. He is the Lord of the worlds. He is the most beautiful, He is the most merciful. He is our creator. He is our sustainer. He is our cherisher. May the peace and blessings of Allah be continuously showered upon the best of mankind, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the final messenger of Allah, after whom there will be no new prophet. Allah sends him as a mercy to the world. Allah sent him to rescue the world from prostitution, from uh, prostitution, from darkness, from superstition, from all evils, and to restore peace, mercy, harmony, and love in the world so that we can live peacefully here. And that will also help us to achieve our purpose of life. And in the end, we will qualify to go to Jannah. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and his families and the companions. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon us all. Last week, we started a discussion on one of the most important aspects of our life. That is a, the issue of manners, having etiquette and manners. We started a discussion on Adab al Kalam fil Islam, etiquette of speaking, Islamic etiquette of speaking. We said that this etiquette can be categorized into five. Before I mentioned the five, I first talked about the importance of being well-mannered. Of being well-mannered, it gives us respect and honor with people. It earns us the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It makes us disciplined and it gives us rest and peace of mind. It is achievable. We will not harm others and we may not likely be offended by others when we discipline ourselves, we conduct ourselves with the manners that we have been given. Islam is a religion that values manners so much. The Prophet وسلم, said, I have been raised in order to perfect good conduct, good moral conduct. Allah has raised me in order to perfect that is one of the purposes of the mission of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was a day when a man came to the masjid and uh, he urinated in the corner in the masjid. People shouted at him. They wanted to beat him up. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stopped them. He called the man. He said, this place is masjid. Because many of them didn't know anything about masjid. This one was a village Arab, he just come to town. He went to a corner of the masjid, he related there, he didn't know what it meant for. So the Prophet وسلم, called me, he called him, he explained to him that this is a masjid. We remember Allah here, we praise Allah, we recite the Quran, we worship Allah, we don't do any filthy thing here. The manner the Prophet وسلم, admonished him was so uh, motivating to him. That he was so happy, he joined the Prophet وسلم, in the prayer that followed. According to a report, he even said, Oh Allah, irihamni wa Muhammadan, wa la tarham ma'ana ahada. Oh Allah, be merciful to me and be merciful to Muhammad. After the two of us, do not be merciful to anyone again. Because the first, the companions, some of those who were there, they wanted to beat him up. So because of the enormity of what the man had done in their own sight, urinating in the masjid. It's a serious mistake. What the Prophet وسلم, told them later, he said, Allah has not raised you to make things difficult for people. Allah has raised you to make things easy for people. This person did not know. So the best thing is to teach him because he was ignorant. Then to demonstrate the level of his ignorance, look at the dua he also made after the prayer. 
that Allah should be merciful to him alone and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after that, he should not be merciful to anyone again. That means the, person, the man was very ignorant. So the next thing for this kind of person is not to beat him up, but to guide him because he did not know. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam guided both of them that good manners are necessary in order to be a respectable and honorable in the society and also to be disciplined and hand the pleasure of Allah. Five things I said, we can summarize the whole teachings of Islam about uh, etiquette of sleeping, of uh, uh, speaking into five. The first one is moderation. So we moderate in whatever you want to say. We talk extensively about this, not being too loud, not uh, being too uh, slow, not too being uh, fast when you are talking, and uh, you know, not talking excessively. The other one, the second point is decency. We should be decent. We should show some level of respect and civility whenever we are talking. We should not be rude. We should not be harsh. We should not be rude. We should not be harsh. So we don't say things to put, put it to people down. So we don't uh, conduct ourselves impudently as believers to whatever condition we find ourselves, even if we are angry to make sure that we discipline ourselves and we demonstrate our decency in our speech. And uh, we talked also about, uh, so these are the major two things we discussed about the manners, um, etic Islamic etiquette of, uh, of speaking. The last three, inshallah, we are going to discuss today. The first one is, this tongue is meant to be a tool of worship. That is the thought principle, the thought etiquette of speaking in Islam. The, the tongue is a means of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's so easy for us to win Allah's love and to win Jannah through what we say, through our tongue. Take for example, the kalima to shahada, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. That's the greatest thing anyone can say to earn the pleasure of Allah. And that is the gateway to Jannah. That is the key of paradise. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. That is the key to paradise. Once we say it sincerely and we do deeds that correspond to sincerity of this kalima, one deserves to go to Jannah. Whatever one does, if one does not have this La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah, one may not be able to make it so to Jannah. It is with the tongue we say this out. During the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a Jewish young man was sick. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam missed him because the guy used to come around to where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived to help him about some chores. So when the Prophet وسلم, did not see him, he asked after him. On learning that the man was sick, the Prophet وسلم, went to his house to visit him. So when he got there, the Prophet وسلم, uh, prayed for him. He later he even encouraged him to embrace Islam. Yes, the Prophet وسلم, encouraged him to embrace Islam. The man looked up to his father, then as if he was asking his father's uh, direction and guidance on what the Prophet Sallallahu had said. His father said, Ati' Abul Qasim, listen to Abul Qasim. The Prophet Sallallahu is Abul Qasim, was Qasim, was uh, his first uh, son. So listen to Abul Qasim. Shortly after that, the man said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, I bear witness that there is no deity worth of worship except Allah and, Allah and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah. It wasn't long when the man died. As if the Prophet وسلم, himself knew that he was about to die. The guy died and the Prophet وسلم, was happy that he embraced Islam before he died even though he didn't do any other thing apart from kalimatu, a shahada. He took the shahada 
the only kalima he ever said in his life to embrace, I mean, to admit him into Islam, and also which automatically admitted him into Jannah, because he did not have opportunity to do any other thing apart from this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam announced to people, he said, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi anqadahu bi min al Praise be to Allah, who rescued him from hell fire through me. Allah rescued him from hell fire through me. That is through the da'wah the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made to him. We should never look down upon any good deed, for we have the opportunity to do it. This was this kalima. It was this advice this guy listened to that saved him. This is one of the things we need to do with our tongue to see the shahada. La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. And that saved him. Saved him completely from hellfire and he became one of those who will enter Jannah. This is how serious the kalima is. When the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu was dying, Abu Talib, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to him, he said, Ya am, O oh my uncle, Kul la ilaha illallah, declare your belief in la ilaha illallah, kalimatan ashhadu laka biha illallah. I will defend you in the presence of Allah if you can see this kalima sincerely from your heart. Uncle, you are dying. Say this la ilaha illallah so that I will defend you in the sight of Allah. Unfortunately, he was discouraged by those who were also seated around him while this man was dying. They were asking him, okay. You want to say la ilaha illallah now? What you did not say before? Just because of uh, uh, your fear or because of what? So the man was dissuaded from saying la ilaha illallah. And that is why how he died in shirk. La ilaha illallah. We should always remember to say it. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever performs ablution and says, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu after ablution, all the eight gates of Jannah will be open for you. You enter from whichever gates you like. Subhanallah. Just saying this word. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. All the eight gates of Jannah will be open for you. That is, when you say it, all the eight gates of Jannah will be open for you in this world. Only that because you have not died, you may not be able to enter. Or if you say this regularly after your ablution, each time you perform ablution, you see this, on the day of your resurrection, all the eight gates of Jannah will be open for you to enter from whichever gates you like. Allahu Akbar. That is a great honor in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In many parts of the Quran, Allah would say, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu dhkurullaha dhikran kathira. Remember Allah much, O oh believers, as in Quran chapter 33, verse 41. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, believers, uzkuru Allah dhikran kathira. Remember Allah much, wa sabbihuhu, bukratan wa asila, and glorify Him morning and evening. Remember Allah much, and glorify Him morning and evening. That is a command from Allah, Azza wa Jalla. In another verse of the Quran, as in Surah al Jumu'ah, Allah says, وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Remember Allah much, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So that you will prosper. It's a way to prosperity when you remember Allah much. Instead of you to talk, talk, talk. Talking about people, talking about others, no. So talking about what is not even your business, talking about what you don't know. It's better for you to engage your tongue in the remembrance of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Remember Allah much so that you will prosper. Wallahi, anyone who remembers Allah regularly will prosper. It's a promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Allah, it gives you peace of mind. Allah bi dhikri Allahi tatuma innu al-kuloob. In Quran chapter 13, Surah al verse 28, Allah says, it is indeed in the remembrance of Allah Thus, do the hearts find peace? The hearts find peace in the remembrance of Allah. When you are living in worries, you have anxiety. Remember Allah often. You will see that these worries and anxieties, the fears will be removed from, your, from you. And also, if you are suffering depression, 
one of the ways of attending to it is when you remember Allah Azza wa Jalla so much because it's a promise of Allah. Alladhina amanu wa tatumma innu ulubuhum bidhikrillah. Believers whose hearts find rest in the remembrance of Allah. Allah indeed bidhikrillah it tatumma innu ulubuhum. It is in the remembrance of Allah where the hearts find rest. Your mind can find rest when you remember Allah regularly. Something calls our attention. Whenever Allah talks about remembering Him, you would read Kathira, Kathira. Allah would you see any instruction of Allah that goes with Kathira, apart from remembrance of Allah. The first verse I quoted about remembrance of Allah in Surah to write, I mean, in Surah to Al Ahzab, Quran 33, verse 41. Allah says, Ya Yu Aladina Aman, Udkurullah, Dikiran, Kathira. Believers, remember Allah, Kathira, much. The one I quoted to in Surah Al Juma, Allah says, Udkurullah, Kathira, remember Allah, much, La Allah kum to Flehun, so that you will prosper. In Surah Al Ahzab as well, Quran chapter 33, verse 35, Allah mentions 10 things that are always uh, that always feature believers. Hmm? In the Muslimina wal Muslimat, wal Mu'minina wal Mu'minat, wal Qanitina wal Qanitat, wal Sadiqina wal Sadiqat, wal Sabirina wal Sabirat, wal Khashi'ina wal Khashi'at, wal Mutasaddiqina wal Mutasaddiqat, wal Sa'imina wal Sa'imat, wal Hafithina Furujan wal Hafithat, wal Dhaqirina Allah, Kathira wal Dhaqirat. Those who remember Allah much. In the last one Allah mentions there, wal Dhaqirina Allah, he now added Kathira without adding it to other attributes, nine attributes that came before this, I did not mention Kathira. That's Quran chapter 33, Surah Al Azab, verse 35. Allah says, وَذَاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرَ Those who remember Allah much, أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَ There is special forgiveness for them, وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا and great reward. There is forgiveness for them and great reward. When a man came to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, إِنَّ شَرَعِيَ الْإِسْلَامِ قَدْ كَثْرُ فَعَلَيْهِ I have, we have many things to do in Islam. To do this, you have to do that, you have to do that, to do this, to get, get closer to Allah. Can you give me something that I can be consistent upon? If I'm not able to do much for the extras, I'm not able to do much of all the extras. Just give me something I can be consistent, I can be doing regularly. I may not be able to do, to, to do much of the deeds, voluntary deeds, but something. The Prophet وسلم, said, لا يزال لسانك رطبا من ذكر الله. Your tongue, let it always be must in the remembrance of Allah. Let it be wet always in the remembrance of your Allah. If that's the only thing you can do, please hold on to this. Hold on to this remembrance of Allah. Remember Allah regularly. This is why the Prophet وسلم, has given us several things to remember Allah. We have some of them that are general. Some of them are specific. They have time and number. Some of them do not have number. Let us inquire about this and get used to them. So the greatest thing you can use to remember Allah is the Quran. Quran is the greatest remembrance of Allah. Because when you are reading the Quran, this is the word of Allah himself. He spoke to us through Angel Jibreel, through his prophets. This is the Quran that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't get back closer. You can't get back to Allah with anything better than what has come from him. As one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, you can't get back to Allah with anything better than what has come from, from him. Out of everything you can see in the world, the only thing that is not a creation is the Quran. Every other thing is a creation of Allah except the Quran is the words of Allah that are recorded for us. Recite it regularly and your life will become better. It's a light for you in this world. The source of happiness for you. The source of light for you in the grave it is a companion in the grave in the hereafter. It will be your companion leading you to Jannah as well in the hereafter. Read the Quran much. Study the meaning. You can't do anything better for yourself than studying the Quran. Yeah. When it comes to doing something, you want to engage in anything, any vocation, anything, the Quran is the best thing you can spend your lifetime upon. Studying it, learning the meaning. SubhanAllah. Reciting it, memorizing it, 
Don't talk at those. For you, surahs, you know, try every month, try to learn new surah. Try to learn new surah. Allah has made our life easy to do it today. We have so many facilities you can use to learn this Quran. It won't be any excuse for you, Allah, if you get back to Allah and you cannot read the Quran. You get back to Allah and you can't read the Quran, you won't have any excuse because Allah is going to ask you about this Quran. This Quran is a reminder for you and your followers. You are going to be asked about it. You are going to be asked about your relationship with the Quran. What excuse would you give Allah to Allah if you can't read it? You say you are, you are insane. Would you say you are deaf and dumb? Would you say you are blind? Even the blind read the Quran. Those who are deaf and dumb, they have their means of learning the Quran. They are learning the Quran. Why would you not do that? Please do it. Another thing to remember Allah is the adhkar. For example, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wa la ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talked so much about these four words. Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wa la ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar. Allah loves them so much. To ant, they don't have any number. You can say it as much as you can. You are traveling, you are going somewhere, you are, you are traveling, let your Quran be with you. When you are waiting for your, for your train, you are playing, waiting for your flight, you read your Quran, or you do askar, or you study the Quran. So you are inside your vehicle, you can be listening to the Quran, you are less busy where you are, do something with the Quran. Treat the Quran the way you treat your phone. Hmm? Remember Allah, remember the way you pick up your phone and you read your messages, remember Allah much more than that. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wala ya Allah, wallahu akbar, doesn't have any number. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he emphasized the importance of these four words when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam met him when he traveled to the heavens. We have la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lahu, lahu al-mulku, wa lahu al-hamdu, wa huwa ala kulli shayhin qadir. Hundred times every day. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, anyone who says this hundred times in a day, Allah gives him hundred rewards. Allah removes hundred sins, minor sins from him, hundred minor sins. Then he has the word of having set free ten slaves. Ten slaves, you have bought them, even though they might be expensive, you have bought them and you set them free for the sake of Allah. You are going to have this reward. If you can see this hundred times, it doesn't end there. You it will serve as protection for you from all spiritual, you know, forces, all unforeseen forces, un I mean, unseen forces. When you see this, you don't need any talisman, you don't need any amulets, you don't need any charm, you don't need any uh, madarikan. Oh, oh, oh. Once we can say, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lahu, lahu al-mulku, wa lahu al-hamdu, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Hundred times every day. If you can't say it hundred times, you can say it ten times in the morning, ten times in the, in the evening, and uh, you say it after every salat as well. In our salat, what we do is remembrance of Allah. When we stand for prayer, we remember Allah. This is Allah says, Wa akimi salata ridikiri. Establish that prayer in order to remember me. This is why in salat, no silence. No silence in salat. Unless you are behind the Imam and you can hear the recitation. That is when you are silent. But in other aspect of salat, salat is to remember Allah, you must be saying something. Like in Zuri, for example, Imam will be silent if you are praying behind him. The, the first two rakats, Imam is going to recite Fatiha and the Surah. You are going to read your own Fatiha. You pick your own Surah. When you finish one, the Imam has not gone for Rukul. Pick another Surah and continue. No silence in Salat. In your Rukul, if you are praying alone, you see the Askar as much as possible. If you are praying behind the Imam, as long as the Imam remains there, continue saying Askar. Subhana Rabbi al Adim. Subhana Rabbi al Adim. Subhana Rabbi al Adim. And so on and so forth. No silence in Salat. Let's, don't let be any silence in your dunya as well. I don't even know what to be doing now. Why would we, a Muslim see that? He doesn't know what he will be doing. He doesn't know we have anything to do. Subhanallah, you have a lot of things to do. Worry about your Quran, worry about Allah. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Another one is after his Salat, say Subhanallah, 33, Alhamdulillah, 33, Allahu Akbar, 33. Or Subhanallah, 25, Alhamdulillah, 25. Allahu Akbar, 25. La ilaha illallah, 25. Making 100. When you go to bed, before you sleep, don't forget this as well. Subhanallah, 33. Alhamdulillah, 33. 
Allah Akbar, 34, whenever you go to bed. Always remember Allah. The first thing you should say when you wake up, let us be praise of Allah. The last thing you say when you go to bed, let us be remembrance of Allah. Intermittently, remember Allah. Allah has promised us to Allah. You are going to prosper if you can be remembering Allah much. May Allah Azza wa Jalla make it easy for us. Another thing uh, we can do with our, with our tongue, apart from remembrance of Allah, is giving, okay, let's go to the next uh, point, which is the, uh, the, the next etiquette of using our, our tongue, which is the thoughts, is to be constructive. Be constructive, do not be destructive. This tongue can make a person and can break a person. It can make a person and it can break a person. You can use this tongue to help a person in succeeding and you can help your mouth in causing a person to fail. You can use this to, you, to cause a person to fail. This is why we should use our tongue constructively, not in a way to destroy ourselves or to destroy others. There are many ways of using our tongue to construct. Sometimes someone may talk to you, a leader, for example, he may commit a political suicide to what he sees. That is how he will lose support from his people because of what? Because of what he sees. And some may gain the hearts of others because of what you say. The way you talk sometimes, you win the heart of your spouse. And because of what you say, you can lose the love the person has for you because of what you say and how you say what you say. Be constructive. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a day he talked about Abdullah ibn Umar. I mentioned this before. He said, Abdullah, ni'ma rajul. Abdullah ibn Umar, ah, mashallah, he's a wonderful man. If only he prays in the night. So when Abdullah ibn Umar asked about this, eh, the Prophet said, I'm a good person. Only one thing, only one thing is defective. I'm defective in one thing. That is, he doesn't use us to wake up for tahajjud then. Abdul, uh, Salim, the son of Abdullah, said, since that time, my father would never sleep all night. He would wake up in the night to offer night prayer. Why? Look at how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praised him, that he was a good man, if not for one thing, in name. You see how this person was changed for good. He became a better person for good, just because of the way the Prophet handled his guidance to him. He first commended him, and he now, you know, called his attention to where he was defective. This is what we should use for ourselves in the society. We can make the society to become better than this. We can make people to become better if we can praise virtue. We commend virtue. We commend virtue. We don't only criticize, you know, people when they make uh, mistakes or when they do wrongs. If we can be commending others, always look for something commendable in anyone, even if you want to criticize. Nobody can be as bad as a bliss. Nobody can be as bad as a bliss. So whoever it might be, if you want to criticize a person, Look at your intention. Your criticism, is it for the person to become better or because you want to ruin him? If it's because you want to assassinate his character, then you know you are going to have a sin for that. But if it is to build a person, to make him a better person, then there are many uh, decent and diplomatic way of talking to people, talking about the people to get the best out of them. Instead of criticizing, instead of focusing on the negative aspect of people, focus on the positive aspect. This happens sometimes when we are dealing with our spouses. You want to correct your wife. Instead of you to appreciate her, certain things she has been doing. Appreciate her cooking, appreciate her dressing, appreciate her efforts at home. At least she must be important to you in one way or the other. You forget all these good aspects of her. You don't focus on the negative aspects of her. You criticize her always only on those negative aspects, as if she doesn't have any good aspect of him, of her. Allah. So in this, she's not encouraged. She may get worse. She may become stubborn. She may become stubborn to you because of the manner you undo your misunderstandings. The same thing you have been complaining about your husband. But look at the way you talk to him. You think you can always lecture your husband? 
you are the one to tell I him what he must do, or he must always do whatever you, you, you say. It doesn't work that way. Or just because your husband does certain things you don't like, that is when you now forget all his fifos, all his good things, the good deeds he has been doing, all the, the things he has been doing for you. You forget everything as if he has not done anything, any good thing in your life. So instead of you to appreciate him, oh, thank you, Delin. I appreciate your, I mean, in fact, you are everything to me. You know, something like this. Now say, but please, I would like that. Aha. And you don't, uh, you know, uh, praise him or commend him just because of something you want to get from him. Once you know that this person uh, uh, is worthy of appreciation, appreciate the person, not only because of something you want from him, that is nice. You don't think of oh, what's the best way to oh exactly my room border Kaliwana je exactly we 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 lock oyau Kaliwana kaja you shouldn't be that way that you are only using this as a way to get something from him you are not sincere about it anyone that is doing good please appreciate the person appreciate the person and the person will become better even though you should not be expecting it but it's good it's part of Islam the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man sana ilayikum ma'rufan Anyone who has done you any good, he has done you any fifo, he has rendered any fifo to you, any gesture, kind gesture, you have to reward the person. Look for something to reward him. He has done you any good in any way. Anyone that's no, Alhamdulillah, Allah has used him in my life to change many things. Allah has used him you know, to make my life better in one way or the other, spiritually, materially, socially, or whatever. Always, you must pay the person back, reward the person. Look for something you can do to reward the person. The Prophet now said, If you don't find anything to reward the person, then then you have to pray for the person. You have to pray for the person. But the principle is anyone who has been nice or good to us in any way, we have to reward the person. You have to show appreciation. And I used to say as well, Man la yashkuru nasa, if you are not grateful to people, you will not be grateful to Allah. Okay, it's Allah was then that, then that is, but He has used some people. Whatever you may find yourself today, you have climbed the shoulders of some people to get to where you are. Consider things, people who Allah has made as a source of your happiness. Maybe your spouse. You are happy you are a father. You have you, you, someone who gave birth to these children. You are happy you are a mother. So remember the husband who has been taking care of you. Remember, in any way, Allah has used a lot of people in our lives. Always be appreciative. Humble yourself to say thank you to those people. And anyone you want to criticize for anything, always look for what's the best, that, that, whatever that person has done well. Please mention it as you want to mention what uh, you want to criticize. Mention whatever anyone has done. That is the best way to make this world a better place. Those who have been doing good in the society, in the family, in the community, find an occasion to mention them and praise them so that they will be motivated to do more. We praise people who appreciate them, they will be motivated to, to do more. So the point we are talking about is be constructive, be constructive. Don't destroy the society, don't destroy leadership, don't destroy a community. Because there are some people, they are Avengers of, 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 of evil. Wherever they get to, the, the place will not, be, will not be peaceful again through their mouths because they are destructive. They are destructive. If you are like that, you are a shaitan in disguise. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was passing by two graves one day. He said, huh, the occupants of these two graves are being punished now. One of them Used not can he be Namima? He was a rumor monger. He was a slanderer. He would hear something from one person, tell another person just to cause trouble between them. Wherever he gets to, he will destroy the leadership. He destroys leadership, friendship, friendship, leadership. He destroys it in his community. He destroys his community in the in the family. He destroys the family through his tongue. Through his tongue. His bad things that is easy for him to spread. He hardly spreads good things. He hardly spreads good things about others. But bad things are ah, so quick about that. Olufufuni. Jerumamonga. 
It's a slanderer. That was why the person was being punished in the grave because when he was alive, he was destructive, never constructive. Human ban yang wen yajen used to spoil the relationship. Please be careful. Be careful. The other person, the prophet said, he was being punished in the grave because he used not to take proper care of himself whenever he urinated. If you used the toilet, he was so careless. Urine would splash back on his clothes, on his body. He would not even cleanse himself. That is how he would worship Allah. And that invalidated his, uh, his worship. And he did not know. Let's pay attention to our purification without being extreme about, uh, about it. So the point we want to bring out from that hadith, that person, the man who was being punished in the grave on account of how he used his tongue when he was alive. He was destructive. He was never constructive. Please be constructive, be progressive, not retrogressive. Uh, People may come to us for advice. Always give them good advice. Always give them good advice. Some people come to us with fights. Always guide them to the right path. Guide them. Talk to them. Oh, forgive now. Life or your I am now. Forgive him. Good advice. That is how a Muslim should be. But hypocrites. See how Allah describes them in the Quran. In Quran chapter 9, Quran chapter Tawbah, Quran chapter 9, Surah Tawbah, verse 67. Allah says, Al Munafikun al Munafikot, uh, hypocrites, men and women, Baduhum in bad, they are alike. Atokunimwa, Atobeniwa, Bakana and Simawa. Hypocrites, men and women, they behave alike. How? Ya Muruna Bilimunka. They advise others to do what is bad. When how na al ma'ruf and they discourage what is good, they encourage vices and they discourage virtues. Ubuntu bada, you man discourage others. Look at yourself. Are you not a monarchic? Are you not a hypocrite? Look at those who come to you for advice. How do you advise them? A person has come to you reporting his spouse, his wife. A person has come to you reporting a husband. How do you advise the person? Your neighbors, your children. What advice do you give your children about your relations? About your relations? What do you say about your neighbors to your children? What do you say about your neighbors to your children? What do you say about your siblings to your spouses and to your children? Let's be on our guard. Let's be on our guard. Be careful. And I say, Salimun Afikun, hypocrites, bad women, bad. They are like. They are Muruna bin Munkar. They command vices. And they discourage others from doing what is good. Don't be among them. Be constructive. Don't be destructive. Be progressive. Don't be regressive. In another verse of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talks about uh, believers and us and how angels we are going to welcome them after death. Because after death, you will be perplexed, you'll be confused. Hey. He put on so that to join on the day. The death I've heard so much about now. The reality has dawned on me. The death has come. No spouse, no friend, no children, no relation. I'm going back to my Lord. I'm going back alone. What do I have waiting for me over there? These fears will come to your mind. But you know what? Because we're a righteous person, angels will welcome you. Even at the point of death, you will be seeing the angels. People will not be able to see them. They welcome you. To, you don't have any fear. You don't grieve about anything. You are going back to Allah. Yeah, that Allah you love so much. That, that Allah you were so devoted to. That Allah you were so sincere with. That, that Allah that you have promoted is Islam. You have promoted his name. You are going back to him. You don't have any worry when you are going back to your Lord. He is the Arham Rahimin. He is Arham Rahimin. May Allah make that day when we are going back to Him, may Allah make it the happiest of our days. May Allah grant us support. May Allah grant us uh, peace. May Allah grant us His magfirah. Angels will be welcoming you. Then when Allah talks about the angels welcoming you, Allah now says something. That's what of Fusilat, verse 33. Allah now says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَوْلَ إِنَّنِي the old thing about the angels welcoming you into Jannah starts 
uh, into the Akhirah, into the hereafter, start from verse 30 of Surah 2, Fusilat, Quran chapter 32. Now, Allah says, Waman Ahsan Qawla, who is better in speech? Who is better in speech? Mimman da'a ilallah than he who invites others to the way of Allah. Wa'amila saliha, and he does righteous deeds. Waqawla inna nim del muslimin, and he declares, I am one of the believers who is better in speech than this person. Pay attention to this verse, verse 33. Who can be better in speech than this? That is, when you are talking about dealing with others, there is nothing you can tell others than inviting them to the way of Allah. Anything that is pleasing to Allah, inviting others to it, giving them good advice, guiding them in their manners, guiding them in their businesses, guiding them in their, their way of life, guiding them to way of prosperity and salvation here and hereafter. Allah says, no one can be better in speech when it comes to speaking. Nobody can be better when it comes to speaking and relating with others through speaking. No one is better than this person who has this quality. What are those qualities? Da'a ilallah. Invite others to the way of Allah. You preach. As I talk now, I'm preaching. There is no way I can better relate with you in the sight of Allah when it comes to speaking than this. Be one of those who make da'a as well. Be a da'a or support one. Anyone who is making da'wa, making correct, is doing correct da'wa, inviting others to good manners, inviting others to prosperity here, salvation hereafter. Please, be one of them. This is why Allah loves all his prophets. Because they invited mankind to the way of Allah, to Jannah. There is nothing better than inviting others, leading others to Jannah. There is nothing better than that. And the right way to do that is by talking. Join those who are doing da'wa. Dawa, start with your family. Always pay attention to the family. Do lectures for them. Say in terms of lecture, let's see by. Do lectures in your family. Don't do anything. Whatever you know, una need, say it. You and your children. Advise them. Guide them. Talk to them. Take your Quran. It's translated into all languages of the world. You just look at the verse. Speak it first. Call your children, talk to them. Mm -hmm. The grown ups amongst them, you can ask them to yeah, go and study this verse, particular verse. Okay, yeah, come and discuss it. Your children, let them talk, it. let them give you lectures and listen so that that tradition can continue in their families too. And we listen to lecture regularly, we will not be corrupt. Our heart will not be corrupt. If your heart is not corrupt, then you too will not be corrupt. And if you can remove spiritual and moral corruption, Allah, if the, uh, we remove moral corruption, there won't be social corruption. So if society is corrupt because our minds are corrupt. When minds are corrupt, the land will be corrupt. Yeah. When minds are corrupt, the land will be corrupt. That is it. Give lecture regularly. By Riyadu Salihin. There's one book called Riyadu Salihin. It's a book that contains verses of the Quran and hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that has been translated into English. It's, it's segmented, you know. Divided into section, section, topics by topics, headings by uh, different headings. Just pick any. Oh, start from the beginning. Pick one of your children. They speak good, good English. They can read. Ask them to read. Read the Arabic. Read the English. If they cannot read the Arabic, then you have to get a teacher for them. Or they have to be attending madrasa. Read the Arabic. The verse in Arabic. Read the hadith in Arabic. Now tell us the translation. Explain it. It's one of the best things you can do. If you can be doing it in your family, you will see you will see that happiness in your family. It's the secret of happiness that the words of Allah is studied or are studied in your home, that the sunnah of the prophet is studied in your home. It's a source of light, source of blessing for your family. Try it and you will see a change in your family. You may pick only one day in the week or two days in the week between Maghrib and Nisha or after Fajri prayer, just five minutes before everybody disperses. Before you go to work, before you go to school, Five minutes, ten minutes after Fajri, talk to them. Pick one hadith. Maybe one short hadith. You have books on short, short hadith. You study it together. So this is very important. It's one of the things that is most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you preach, you guide others. So Allah says, you can't be better in speech than that. And you do righteous deeds. That is what you say, you also practice it.
is it be a man who go a man who remain me a man who are me oh no you say you preach to others and you also act by what you preach wa qala in the name del muslimin and he says i am one of the muslims allah akbar allah loves to hear that you say that you are a muslim allah loves to hear that you say that you are a muslim allah not seem to want us to have double standard you hide your islam subhanallah you don't hide islam islam if it's a blessing to you there's a grace not a disgrace why hiding it why hiding islamic identity allah loves that you don't hide islamic identity your muslim name let people know it why hiding it from your friends because you are not muslims oh you have taken your own islam to be a disgrace for you why hiding to do your worship when you have the chance to do it nobody stops you from using your hijab nobody stops you from using your scarf nobody used to stop you from using your khimar why don't you use it you are hiding it. you don't want to be uh, he said this is this no 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 you are worshiping allah who did not create you allah created you you are not going back to people you are going back to allah don't hide your islamic identity say that you are a muslim say it emphatically where you are that i'm a muslim allah loves to hear that in the name of muslim i'm one of the muslims allah doesn't like all these divisive uh, titles we use for ourselves sometimes and this one is uh, uh, uh i'm tijani I'm Qadiri, I'm Salafi, I'm Khalafi, I'm Medis, I'm that. No, Allah says you can be better in speech than saying, Innani minal Muslim. I'm one of the Muslims. I don't discriminate myself. I don't boast of any particular name or any particular title that I'm better than others. No, I'm a Muslim. Muslim. Be constructive. Do da'wah. It's one of the ways of building people. Do da'wah. Give people orientation. Enlighten people. Be a life coach. Be a counselor. Counsel people. Learn about counseling. Marital. Counseling people about marital life, about uh, job, about uh, lifestyle, about there are many things you can counsel, counsel people about. Be a life coach. So be useful to your society in one way or the other. This tongue, this mouth, subhanAllah, we can build through it. You can build a nation through it. You can destroy a person as well and destroy a nation through it. Sometimes we remember something that the elders told us. Ah, that that's that person. Ah, that advice he gave me. He gave me one golden advice. I stick to it and my life is like this. We remember this. This is Allah loves something like this. Always be positive. Always be positive. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us uh, uh, better. And finally, uh, under being progressive as well, try not to always be given excuses. So that some people, you know, they can destroy uh, relationship, they can destroy things by giving excuses always. Do this, they will not do what they are supposed to do. They have excuse for everything. They have excuses for everything. It's one of the tricks of hypocrisy that Allah talks about in the Quran. Do whatever you are supposed to do. Don't always procrastinate. Don't procrastinate. Do the right thing at the right time. And always give your best in anything you are, you are doing. Don't always swear. Uh, well, light a lie. Ah, well, light a lie. Well, light. You don't need it unless you are legally required to, to swear to an oath. Don't always say, well, lie, well, lie, well, lie. Especially when you, are that, when you are lying. You must never use Allah's name in this manner because it is kind of disregard for uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And be careful too when you laugh because we laugh with your tongue too, the mouth. So when you are laughing, you can be constructive through your laughing and you can be destructive as well. You can laugh in their sin. You can laugh to destroy another person. You have to guard that one too. And another one is don't tell lies. Always be honest and truthful. Be honest and truthful. True lie, you can ruin a relationship. True lie, you can cause harm to another person. True lie, you can, you can destroy another person's life. You can destroy their businesses. You can destroy their happiness. True lies. Don't tell lies. Liars are destroyers. Liars are dangerous in the society, in the family, in the community. Liars are shaitan in disguise. Liars, they are shayateen in disguise. Always tell the truth. Say the truth in the Quran. Allah says, Walahum adhabun alimum bimakanu yakizibun. There will be great punishment, grievous punishment for them because they used to tell lies. Don't tell lies. Don't tell lies. Don't tell lies. Always be honest and truthful. May Allah make it easy for us. And finally, 
the etiquette of speak, Islamic etiquette of speaking, the last one we talk about, is guard your tongue in the deen of Allah. Guard your tongue in the deen of Allah. Be careful of how you use your tongue when it comes to Islam. You don't know everything. Whatever you don't know, please don't say it. It's a serious sin in the sight of Allah. Look at Quran chapter 16, verse 416. See what Allah says there. Inna ladhini yaftaruna ala Allah ila kathiba la yuflihun. Those who invent lies about Allah will never prosper. Those who invent lies about Allah will never prosper. Allah says that, don't invent lies. How do we invent lies about Allah? By laying a claim to certain things in religion that you know you don't have. So you, you talk, or you talk about religion without knowledge. You know, in Islam, and in Islam, I don't know it. You don't have any evidence for it. Or you say, even in the Quran, Allah says, and you don't have any evidence to that. Hmm? You don't have any evidence to, back, to, to support what you are making, laying a claim to that the Quran says this. You don't have any evidence. Be careful. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, Man yakuli alayya malam akul, falyatabawwa maka'idahu min al-nar. Anyone who attributes to me what I did not see, he should find a suitable place for himself in Jahannam in hellfire. When you attribute to me what I did not say, find a place for yourself in hellfire. You must not lie on the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you don't know any hadith, please don't quote it. If you have to quote it, then you must have confirmed it. The hadith, if it is found in Sahih Bukhari, go ahead, quote it. If it is found in Sahih Muslim, go ahead, quote it. You can quote it. Because scholars are in agreement that a hadith in these two books are authentic. So they are authentically reported from the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But any other books, you may be careful before you quote, or you are quoting someone that will trust his knowledge and his authority in the deen, you can quote them. So be careful before you attribute anything to the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And also, be careful, avoid something, and that is making a mockery of the deen or people who practice the deen. Don't be careful, don't make mockery of people in Quran chapter uh, 9, start with Tawbah again, verse 65, 67. Allah subhanahu wa talks about some people who mock others. Allah says, You are making mockery of believers. You are making mockery of Allah, of the Messenger of Allah, of the Quran. Allah says, La ta'tathiru, qad kafarutum ba'da imanikum. Don't give any excuses because you have disbelieved after your, after your belief. This is what Allah says about these people who are making jest of others. If there is something in the deen that you are not able to do now, please be careful. Don't uh, make mockery of others who have been doing it. That's from verse, verse 66 from verse 67, 60, 66, the two verses. That is where Allah talks about those who make mockery of the deen. Don't joke with any Islamic uh, Islamic thing. Well, Quran will lay okay, so, uh, 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 it's just all, all you see about them is just their hijab. Mm? Oh, look at look at the BS. Look at the BS. Or oh, look at their, their clothes. It should not even pass beyond the ankles. Is it not sunnah? Is the Prophet who instructed us to do what to keep to keep the BS? Is the Prophet وسلم, who advised us that you know, whatever we wear should not go beyond the ankle bones. It is sunnah. It's not a bleak, it's not a whatever, it's not a sign of extremism, fanatism, no. Don't make mockery of anybody in the deen. If you can't do it, please, ask Allah to grant you the ability to do what is right too. But those who have been doing it, don't make mockery of any deen, any, or any of them. And don't make mockery of Islam, wherever you are. If you want, don't want to become a, a, a kafir, be careful. You don't joke with alcohol. Subhanallah, things like this, you must not joke with it. Or you joke with the Quran, saying negative bad things about the Quran or Islam or anything about the deen. Be careful, guard your tongue in the deen of Allah. That is the last uh, point we are going to talk about concerning how we are uh, the manners of speaking in Islam. We pray to Almighty Allah to make this beneficial to me who said it and to you who listened to it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us better 
and Muslims. Let us always pray that Allah should grant us good manners and uh, uh, good deeds, uh, good morals. Because the Prophet Sallallahu himself used to pray for it. That Allah should make his morals to become better, to become better in manners. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to pray fervently for, for this. We all need it, that you can be properly guided. We can hand Allah's pleasure and be disciplined and we hand it love of, uh, of people as well. May Allah bless us and bless our families. Subhanakallah, Rabbana bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. If there's any question, so we can ask now, we can send it to the section on the Q and A. Was the best time to observe Salatu Tauba at night? Is it before Witri or after Witri? The hadith on Salatu Tauba is not authentic. The hadith on Salatu Tauba is not authentic. So you don't need, you don't have any Salat that is called Salatu at Tauba. But one, when you know that you have offended Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, according to hadith reported from Ali ibn Abi Talib, perform ablution, do two rakat, and ask Allah for forgiveness. Allah will forgive you. If anyone who performs ablution properly, observes two rakats and asks for Allah's forgiveness, Allah is going to forgive him. So, repent to Allah. You can do any nafla at any time. You recite Fatiha and any surah. But that special salat known as Salatul Tawbah, according to scholars of hadith, the hadith is not authentic from the Prophet. Difference between the general public masjid and the one at, uh, at home. There are many differences about the mosque we have at home and the mosque that is for the public. The mosque that uh, we have at home is only like a musalla, a prayer unit or a prayer hall. But the one for the public is the real masjid. So it's the real masjid. All ahkam that the Prophet would say about a masjid apply to those who are, that is, uh, are actually meant for the public. The one for the public is wakf. Wakf means a, an endowment. Whenever a mosque is built anywhere and people have been allowed to pray inside it, then that mosque is no longer, does no longer belong to the person who built it. It belongs to the Muslim community. The community who determines who is appointed as the <coughs> Imam based on the criteria that the Prophet ﷺ gave us. So, but the investor who built it will always <coughs> be there to oversee the activities of the masjid. He can leave the uh, management of the masjid in the hands of his, uh, of his children. But that mosque being a public masjid and it is an endowment is not heritable. You can't convert it to anything again. Masajid belongs to Allah. You must not convert it to any other thing again. So nobody can inherit the masjid, including the, the land upon which the masjid has been built. But the one at home, you know, is still part of your house. It can be inherited as the house is inherited. So let's be careful. If you want to have a particular place for masjid, you want to open it for the public, then it may not be part of your property anymore. So, but if you know that it's still part of your property, you only uh, seclude that place for, for prayer, then it doesn't have the ruling that the one outside uh, has. May Allah get us right. Do you do tashahud again after prostration of forgetfulness in salat? No. So when you do so you do the sahwi, <coughs> bada salam especially, or qabla salam, after the two prostrations, just raise up your head and you make your islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a'lam, wa sallallahu wa sallam, abarak ala nabina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbi, rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati asanatan wa kina adhaba naa, rabbana hablana mina zuwajina, وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم أحسن أكبتنا في الأمور كلها واجئنا من خس الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة سبحانك اللهم ربنا بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We see you on Friday إن شاء الله for the next تفسير session أحسن الحسن وزيادة ولا يرهق وجوههم قتر ولا ذلة أولئك أصحاب الجنة